Welcome to an unexpected adventure. What began as a follow-up to the Lovelander Project interview I did a few years ago with Paul Gorman, it swiftly transformed into a profound exchange between two people inspired by life's complexities. As our conversation unfolded, it ventured far beyond the confines of traditional interview. We found ourselves delving into the depths of life, kindness, and humanity. Of course, woven into our dialogue was Outlander and the rich world that it encompasses. It was a delightful surprise to find ourselves immersed in such genuine connection and understanding. Instead of dissecting our discussion into fragments, I've chosen to present it to you in its entirety. So sit back, relax, and join us as we embark on this unanticipated but rewarding conversation. I hope you'll enjoy Paul's company as I have, and perhaps find unexpected revelations about life's twists and turns. And this is the final of the Lovelander Project interviews. Hello. Hey, how are you doing, handsome? I'm doing good. How are you doing? Good, good. Long I'm time to see well, yeah, this first time, it's nice seeing you up close and personal. Well, not quite that personal, but, you know, through the <laughs> screen is much better than tapping away. Tap, tap, tapping away, yeah. I think the last <laughs> time we saw each other was over over Zoom, but that was, that was years ago, wasn't it? The pandemic, yeah. It was like our first interview um, was, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, during the pandemic. And <laughs> it seems like a million years ago now, yet. It seems so long ago. It seems was, so long ago. Yeah, I was reading over the interview just uh, a little while ago, and it was it was interesting because you know you asked I asked about you know the things that you felt like you maybe took for granted. Yeah, yeah, and and you know, and now that I'm looking back, I'm like, oh, geez, I'm doing it again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking those things for granted that I you know solely missed. And yeah, how do you feel about that? I know, I know, I know, I, I know. I've so. so- glad that the world is like back to normal but then again it doesn't feel like normal it feels like the past past four years have just been crazy and in, in a way that hasn't feel felt crazy before but maybe it has and maybe i was just oblivious to it but like it, it feels like things have amped up to crazy level. You, you're right <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure you're right it's it's I, i've thought about your generation a lot during this time oh, because true. You guys, have, because my kids are, you're, you're smack dab in the middle of their two ages. And what are your so, ages? Kids share? Uh, one's turning 30 in March and the other's turning 25 in March. Right. Wow. Okay. So we're, I apparently we're only year. ovulated once a year for, <laughs> for March <laughs> of the month. Uh, Magic but, month. <laughs> yeah. And so I think about it a lot because you guys have so much more information than yeah. we ever had um so at our fingertips also a curse at the same time exactly um but there is the world is a very different place um than you know when i was growing up and, and you know i know a lot of a lot of older folks like myself um you know so oh, i was able to go out by myself and not pay attention like my mom sent me out in the morning and told me not to come home until it's dark outside and i was like yeah, that's bordering on neglect, guys. Like we're. <laughs> <laughs> it was we're... a different style of parenthood back then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it, and you know, I'm I was much different with mine. A little bit overbearing, a little bit overprotective, and a little bit too much because I think I swung not... to the other. Yeah, but, you know. But I think people are finding the happy medium now, which is I think, I think they are. I but I totally get like what you're saying about feeling overbearing because that's I think that comes part and parcel with being a parent, I suppose, because you just want them to be protected and like wrap them in bubble wrap and make sure nothing yep. ever happens to them. I I felt like as I got older that I I kind of understand why my parents were but they were they were they were very. Uh, they, they they gave me and my sister a lot of freedom, but obviously there's certain things like, oh, I just want to go out, I just want to do that. And they're like, no, mm-hmm. it's a certain time. And you never understand it as a kid, but when you get older, you're like, oh, no, I totally. Yeah, just, it was, yeah, yeah, it was yeah. midnight and it was a bad yeah. idea. <laughs> yeah, because that impulsivity is, you know, huge with teens and themselves. But did I read right? Were you born at home? Was I born at home? As in like, yeah. was it? Yeah, I I thought I I picked that up. So no, okay. Uh, I was like, "God, your mom's holistic and good." No, I, <laughs> I like it. Uh, 
Oh, I don't. Th- I don't even know if that was a conversation that my folks had. No, I think I I was born literally um, a two minute walk from where, where I am right now. I'm currently in my mum's wow. um, home, um, and she it's just loves the library. She just loves it, and it looks like I'm at the library. <laughs> it's beautiful. I love the the books are amazing. Of all novels, I think there's a few. There's a few Harry Potter books just here, as you can see. Nice, yeah. So, like, um, people are always after the first edition. Actually, one of them might be a few. There might be because um, people are after the first editions because apparently they're worth them. So, mm-hmm. so, um, but um, yeah, I, I was just born at Rutherglen Maternity, which is just round the round the corner. But it's now now just a health centre. It used to be just a. I, I might be wrong in saying this, but it used to be just a maternity hospital, and there's like a oh, few cool. people born there lauren lyle was born there which is a funny funny a, yeah her at a read through um in season five we were just talking and she's like where are you from i was out from brother she's like oh my god i was born in brother i was like no way i think she went to school and then her parents moved when she was quite young and she was like yeah by the way the, 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 the movement you just heard there was a cat just in case you wondered if there More was cats. A th- <laughs> yeah did you bring mom. your cat or I, I am surrounded by cat sherry my entire <laughs> life. Like four cats in my life. Uh, my sister just got a cat a couple of years ago. Like I, I, I'm the only one without a cat. I need to get, I need to get, get a oh, cat. Oh, did your cats go? They, so they're with my dad. And oh, then okay. Cats. Uh, my my mom got a, a, a newbie cat. Um, <laughs> who's also, well, um, because they're hypoallergenic, so they like um, they're they're right. easier. To, the allergies aren't aren't as uh, aren't as um. I don't know, I don't know what it is. Her fur, or like the she's gone mad. She's running the boat like crazy. Uh, <laughs> she's so excited. Um, Very cool. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but um, no, yes. Yeah, so she said that she was born at uh, Brotherhood Maternity, and I was like, oh my god, I was born there as well. But it's like such a such a small small world. It it's, is. It is. Well, in Scotland, I'm sure because we have there's the. A lot of people from Nova Scotia, I'm from Maritimes, I was born in the Maritimes in Canada, and a lot of people who are still there came over from Scotland, indentured, and uh, and, and stayed. So it's, uh, it, it's, it's funny because I have a lot of the same kind of, I think it's evolutionary, <laughs> because of the idea of 100 years not being, you know, a long time in Scotland, but 100 miles is like, Oh my gosh, it's so far away. Um, Britain, like you go on south, it just feels like oh, it's like a different, there's a different kettle of fish here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but and that's the it's the same mindset in the Maritimes, where as I'm now in Alberta, which is on the other side of Canada, and and it's you know two years is forever, but you can drive for five hours, and it's like that's just a small day trip. Yeah. It blows my mind. It's like people like yourself in Canada and, and people in America as well. Like it is just, they're such big countries. And like, we like to think that we're such a big country and we're really not. It's a seven hour drive and you're in London, which is insane. <laughs> right, right. And that's why I'm so looking forward to find, like finally going to visit. My son's meeting me to it, which is not fair, but that's okay. I'll get over it, I'm sure. Um, and uh, because that's what we want to do. We just want to rent a car and drive everywhere. Yeah, yeah, it's the best. It's especially if, when you come to Scotland, Sherry. It's just like there's there's some thing, there's some tricky roads which I'd say be careful on. But like it right. is very so easy. It's it's such an easy country to just get around because it's it's so small. It's such a small mm-hmm. nation, and it's mad all the history that we have for such a small small bit of land. But we but we do but we do. It's incredible. It's incredible. Yeah, I did my uh my twenty three and me ancestry thing and yeah smack dab scotland and no. ireland boom yeah so no. it was, or, or did you that was that a surprise to you well ireland was a bit of a surprise I, I i knew about the scotland and but yeah the ireland was a bit of a surprise but it was it was it was like oh that explained my drinking um, <laughs> <laughs> that went back a long way uh, so it was it's it's really interesting to check out the dynamics of the not just you know your ancestry but the um old generational thing yeah you i was know? reading i read, read your piece that you wrote about uh was it about your birthday about um yeah yeah about, talking about like trauma from your mother and like it is it is such a what such a well written piece by the way as well but like it is so it's genetic and it's so it and 
that only maybe maybe I'm 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 wrong here, but maybe in the quite recently that's uh, a recent discovery, or like it's it's a more talked about thing yeah. that yeah, it's um the epigenetics is what it's called, and that's how like trauma gets passed on in the genes is that when we don't change a traumatic event, it changes us cellularly. So if we have a history, if our families have history, so being just in countries where there's a lot of war or there's a lot of you know coping yeah. mechanisms that are are brought to the front then those do get passed down to the next generation so but because our genes are malleable yeah. um those ones are that the the healing can happen too and yeah. so just like generational trauma goes to the next generation so does generational healing so it's very good point like it is like you might feel that you can't ever shake it but you're totally right sherry it it can be healed like you're you're talking about absolutely yeah. mm -hmm. and here we are just going off and, and you know what i think that's okay i'm just gonna scroll away the notes dude <laughs> we just like jumped in just that. right in just right in like no hey this is paul i'll i'll <laughs> I'll, I'll edit something later maybe uh, i think i felt like that the first time i chatted with you it was easy you're like just incredibly emotionally intelligent for your age. Oh, that's very kind of you. So. I have to say, um, oh. it's, and I think that was from when uh, you told me about when you got the role. And one of the first things that you did was you went and you talked to your friends who were deaf that taking this role is this a good idea? Yeah. Yeah. It was just totally be about, about being um, sensitive to that because I, I, as you just said, I have a lot of friends who are, who are deaf actors and I know how difficult it is for them to to get roles because there's not many roles written out there. And then I was in, I was in this fortunate position where I was offered this, these two amazing roles, but I was conflicted because I felt that I was I, I was questioning, was I taking away a role from that community and, and having discussions with my friend B, who we brought on as a deaf consultant for the show, and my friend Kieran, and my lecturer, Mark, who taught in my course, but also taught on the, the BSLBA performance course at RCS as well, um, have, having, playing Josiah as well and replicating the same speech patterns, um, it, 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 wouldn't, it wouldn't match up for a deaf actor um, to do is what is what is what they discussed, and I I knew um, uh, casting Simone and, and and Anna who who are part of the casting team of Suzanne Smith. They had reached out and and auditioned uh, deaf actors as well, and and, and I've, that's something I learned later on. Um, but it, it was it was just you just want to be sensitive to to the roles and um, and very, very kindly the, the production totally agreed with bringing on B to to, which to is help, amazing. which is which is brilliant. And Outlander have been great with that. For other for other roles as well, I know for sure. So I just, I just felt very lucky that it was the very supportive environment um, that we felt that we, we could do the roles justice and make them as authentic as possible. Um, not just for us working, but also for the viewers as well. Um, right. For 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 them seeing that that we make those the the, the boys feel as as real as them as possible. Um, well, you did a brilliant job. Um, oh, it's 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 it well there, this is the second dual role i guess on outlander we had tobias menzies doing jack and um and frank so you whereas the duality there is okay two different time time frames and um one's good one one's evil whereas with josiah and kezi there's this goodness that yes. that you that you portray like I, I love the characters in the book um as well and there's no there's 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 no beats there's nothing missing um from what you get from the book because they're just wholesome they're good they're and and i think that <laughs> susan smith again hit the jackpot when she cast you because you're also very wholesome and very good and it's and and it comes through on the screen. Oh, that's that's very kind of you to say, Sherry. And you're 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 right about the, the characters. They are just inherently good people. They're they're very young, so they have that innocence about them. Um, but I I feel like although we don't get to see what the twins are going to be like forty years in the future, mm -hmm. I imagine 
still will be true to themselves and they still will have that inherent goodness. For many reasons, I think because of being taken in by Jamie and Claire and 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 having a, a, a kind of really beautiful relationship with, with Lizzie as well, who is also an inherently good person and good character. Um, but also they, they, they have grown up in some very, very hard conditions and perhaps being growing up in that they have learned that they don't want that they don't want to be affected by that they don't want to take that on themselves and they don't want to um eh, what's the words like act that upon others they don't want to right. treat others that their um I, I suppose owner he wasn't really a father was he <laughs> right. yeah yeah mm-hmm. But like he did, they don't want to bring that into the world because they've exhibited exhibited that themselves. Um, they are they are good good characters and and um, their 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 actions are always always pure. Um, and they they I, the way that I looked at them for the for the, um, season well, all the seasons that I've I've been a part of Outlander for was to that 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 they acted with intentions of helping others and helping putting the others before themselves rather than rather than selfishly act. Um okay. even when they entered this um kind of uh, polygamous relationship with um mm-hmm. with Lynn, and it hurts Jamie or Jamie's afraid of what might happen. Um it's never out of malice that they do that or they've kept it a secret. Um they are acting out of love. It's it's nothing it's nothing sinister or malicious about it. And I see it as almost being far before their time, so to speak, because we know these things have always happened in history. Like this is not something that's new. And I think it's um, the whole idea of polyamory or um, is is that you can love more than one human if you're stable and intelligent enough to do so. Um, it's the... It, you know, and I, I'm in a monogamous relationship for 37. Oh, he's going to kill me if I screwed it up again. Um, <laughs> but for a very long time. And uh, but I can understand people yeah. who choose otherwise. And and it's been said, like was said in the books, it was said in the show that uh, Joe and Kezi were two bodies with one soul. Yes. So I think that that's a really powerful powerful statement in what they are they're still individuals they're still very different but they're connected in a way that wouldn't make sense to them to have a separate partner no not at all not at all right. you've just totally hit the nail on the head and that that was something uh that was a key phrase that i had when when working on these on, on the characters on the show was that this uh one soul and two bodies and like um thinking of that in terms of what they aspire to be, what they want, what they who they, who they love, um, but also still finding individuality, like you're talking about, in those boys as well, and that that was the challenge. It was like having these boys have not just physically similar, but like emotionally similar, but mm-hmm. then finding difference in that as well, and um, a, a, a lot of it. I think I may have said to you before was like for Josiah, it was like focusing on, um his kind of like role as a hunter and how that affected his like physicality and how he would speak to people and the respect that they would have. Um, and then with Kezi, it was like focusing on, um, focusing on the fact that he was in captivity for a bit longer. So in season five, he was a bit more enclosed and was a bit more um, standoffish with new people. Um, in season six, it was, it was brilliant because we got to kind of like expand him and his confidence and you see right. him now walk around with a more kind of like strong posture and like a more confident physicality in the way that he speaks as well and the words that he uses um and then also just what we touched on just at the start as well was working with B on his tone uh, on um on uh home signs because in 18th century america there was no asl or, or bsl right. And like thinking that well they, the boys could have came up with some home signs to communicate with each other and um so all, the, all these differences that make these boys individual, but then bringing it back to this commonality of like that they will work to create a better li- life lives for each other. Mm-hmm. But then also, um, like you say, it just makes total sense that they would fall in love with this one person and they would, would they would share that love. Um, and somebody, somebody, somebody asked me in an interview, I think about like, do you think one would get jealous of the other if she chose one 
over the other. And I was, I don't think so. I don't. I think I think that they both have such a foundation of love for each other and respect for each other that even though one, even though they both love the same person, and Lizzie would choose in this hypothetical world, she would right. choose one or the other. The other one would just be happy for them, and they wouldn't see that as they wouldn't be jealous and they wouldn't be um, envious of that at all. Um, total, total hypothetical situation, but like it right, was something. For sure. Yeah, never thought of that before, but I don't think they would act in that way. Mm-hmm. Um, like you're saying, they are inherently good people, so I don't think they would right. they would act mm-hmm. in any kind of malicious way at all. Which is really, which is a really cool way to look at, you know, how the relationship adapts and grows as they as, as they get older, right? Um, is there? Are you going to be in the second half of season two or seven? seven? Season two, jeez. <laughs> um, I cannot confirm. <laughs> okay, I think I, I had to ask. Um, yeah, love yeah. to see, of course. Um, it's because <laughs> things are just wrapping up so fast. It seems like now, and people are saying fast. What are you talking about? We're we've been waiting forever. But to me, it's fast because I I waited like twenty years to see the books come to life. Anyway, so um, you. you- for, for years to see like it like visually like to, to see it as well i didn't know yeah. i i was I was looking at this i saw this recently i didn't know and correct me if i'm wrong but i read that was season one split into two parts when it was yeah. released as well. was okay so this has happened this has happened before got you right got you. yeah that was my first droughtlander meme that i did <laughs> during that break <laughs> and it was like the only way to survive droughtlander and it just had pictures of claire drank yeah. the whole time yeah so it was uh it was it was a good time but it, it's funny because it was it seems like it seems like yesterday but as each new character comes in and develops their roles and it's nice to it's nice to get at least the pieces of of the puzzle instead of you know um like caitlin has been uh fantastic not only as your co-star but your friend you can tell 100 percent. i listened to the podcast that that you did on on her podcast and i'll link it um later on but it was it was it was kind of i felt voyeuristic a little bit listening in on you two it was like two friends just having a really deep personal conversation Uh, yeah it felt like that and she i think she's even though we are like really good friends i've I've listened to a few of her uh, episodes in that podcast and she seems to establish that with everybody that she 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 meets even though we've known each other for years like she's she mm-hmm. said she met like a lot of new people through the podcast and listening to it you you just think that they've been friends for so long it's such a such a but she told me the idea of it when she was making it. I was like, that's such a clever idea because it's showing that nobody uh, and pardon my french but nobody has their shit together <laughs> um, no yeah. matter levels of success because she's now she's had like people like politicians on and writers and musicians and who, who are just so good at their field but like it shows that even if you're at such a, a point that you've aspired to for so long you can still feel that your world is kind of crumbling in and um it's such a it's such a good podcast because it, it dives into like sincere things but then also like funny things and she's right. like totally totally nailing it but um you you're you're totally right like i gained like a like a total best friend from this process and um i feel so lucky that i've had caitlin as my partner throughout this journey and we were both we both came just just graduated drama school when we got these jobs and um so we're coming from a similar place and a similar understanding and navigating this together and it can seem totally crazy at times like the scale of the show and the audience that it has and the all everything that gets put into it as well can feel overwhelming at points but I was just I'm just so grateful that I had her and specifically her to like go through this this journey to and we're making decisions about the characters together and about a relationship together and it felt like a total like um just felt like a total teamwork project it was it was it was I, yeah I was just thinking back to like I had a FaceTime with her a couple of weeks ago and I was just thinking I just I'm just so lucky that it was you um mm-hmm. It's totally like how, how how crazy is that? It's like it's the stars aligning, and um, it's uh, yeah, forever grateful. I know, I know, I know. What once once the show comes to an end as well, that I've got like a friend for life as well that I'll always catch up with and always um, always bounce ideas off of, and um, knows knows has always got my back as well. It's um, yeah, it's uh, really lucky that I've I've got her. It's a, it's a special thing, and I think you know there's there is the element of luck, but I think we also bring in those energies to to ourselves. You know, like 
what we put out, we get back very often. So, you know, it's a, it's a testament to you as well with, uh, with that relationship, because I'm pretty sure Caitlin seems like she's a very, um, um, knows what she wants kind of girl. And, and, and it's, it comes across very uh, beautiful to me because I remember when I was in my twenties and yeah, that having anything figured out was beyond me. So uh, it's it's it really such, cool watching your generation do this. So intelligent, like one of the like I'm not just saying this, but one of the most intelligent people I've ever met is Caitlin Ryan. Like she has, she just the way her mind works, and she's so sensitive and considerate as well. Like it's just such a good balance. It's um, yeah, she's very cool. She's very yeah. cool. She does seem very cool. Like it's like yeah, too cool for me to hang out with, but I will admire her from afar. <laughs> Presence, like, uh, uh, it's, it's, uh, like <laughs> I want to talk to you for sure about mayflies. Oh, bless you, Sherry. You sent me a lovely message when you watched it as well. I, I really oh. appreciate you found it the was... time. Shit, like because it wasn't out in America, or did it? No, just no. I I heard. I'm pretty good at that. So. <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was oh, beautiful i've read the book first um did you read the book before i hadn't read the book before i got the job and i got the job i quickly um it was mad i got the tape um so it was i got the tape in june 2022 and the the way they'd sent out the tape was it was an like untitled scottish project so we didn't know where it was from um and i think they used the same character names but no, maybe they didn't maybe they used like pseudonyms um so i did the tape and uh, I had no idea what it was for and sent it on. And in two months, the, the, the dates were coming by when they had said the shoot dates were going to be. And you guys like, oh, I didn't get that job, but we move on. And right. then like, you know, like, I gave me a text during the weekend, been like, I'm setting up a, a meeting for you. And I was like, oh, well, well, okay, to, to meet someone. He's like, no, it's a, it's a recall for for that the, that project. And I was like, oh my God, I completely forgot about that. And then he said what it was, and but the recall was on the Monday and he'd sent me the thing on the Saturday. So I didn't even have time to, to, to I think I'm, like read like the first 30 pages and then was doing the recall and then when I got the part um I, I just divulged the book like as quick as as quick as possible while still reading the scripts and and Andrew Hagen is just an absolute genius oh. and yes. so his writing and and um it just feels so like so talking about authenticity it just felt so authentic and um like I, when we were working on it, it felt so specific to like a kind of like West of Scotland kind of experience. But like it's it's more than that because it has all these kind of universal truths um, about grief, about friendship, about dealing with the unaman un unimaginable as well. And Andrea Gibb, who did uh, did the did the adaptation for for the screen, did such an amazing job of piecing that amazing novel together. Um, yeah, talking talking about luck, I felt very lucky that I could. Um, be involved in that and like and it's um because it deals with such a sensitive and heavy subject matter like hearing people's experiences like in relation to it as well like seeing people post about it and, and reach out to the to the team about how how uh, connected they felt to it was really moving and um I, actually just a, a month or two ago I was talking to my my dad um he he he, he just he brought it up and he had said like him and his his mates have now become more um, open because of the show in a I weird way. I had no, I, I had no idea. Like, yeah, I've like since watching that show and his mates have watched it as well, and they feel that they, they can be more open and vulnerable about certain things. Or their language has changed because seeing in the show like that friendship between um, Martin Compton and Tony Curran, it's like it, it's so open. It's so like they say, "I love you," and and there's a maybe a a stereotype and 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 Scotsman that we don't really say that to one another a lot. We don't really say that I love you, man, or or, or simple right. things like. And um, I suppose the show was was brilliant in that respect. That it had an effect in that way as well. Um, so I, I yeah, feeling very lucky that I could be like a small part of 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 that and ha that having the effect that it had in people was 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 amazing but thank you for reading the book that is so kind that you did that well uh, it was it was on my to read list anyway so Sorry. i was like oh well i want once as soon as i heard that you'd be in it i said okay well i'll give it a read and and i found it really um 
mirroring, I guess, because your your interest in the punk world and in, you know, like when you were a teen too, um, like it seemed like you kind of have a little bit of an 80s finite infinite, you know, like liking a little bit. So uh, I never knew that before. Like it was um, like the punk that I would listen to was mainly from like the 90s. Right. Um, and like um, I would listen to uh, Billy Idol that sings um uh, dancing with myself, isn't it? Billy, Billy Idol. Like, I always mm-hmm. find I would listen to him um, when I was a teenager, anyhow, as well. And then, and then get the chance to be in something from that time, and and um, to be like an abs- an absolute punk rocker. Because, like, I'm I'm kind of like a, I suppose I'm kind of a fake punk rocker. If I'm going to no, be you're honest. not. Punk. No, there's 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 still anti-establishment, but still being a good human. And right? yeah. There is a documentary out, um, I think it's called The Other F Word, and it's about a bunch of punk um, singers and band members who are now dads, they're fathers, so that's The Other F Word, and they're, what's that? The other other F Word. Yeah, yeah, that's what it's called, The Other F Word, and it is brilliant because it shows how they're too breaking down those toxic masculinity things and wanting to share with their family and that i think mayflies did that absolutely beautifully was you know knocking it back knocking back that toxic masculinity wall um showing how it really hurts everybody involved not just women but men mostly because it's internalized and something that's internalized hurts a hell of a lot more so I think that, you know, what your father said and and what a lot of critics said, too, about the movie is that, you know, like, yeah, it's it's OK. And in fact, it's good for me to yeah. be vulnerable and open. Absolutely. And like it's so it can feel very difficult for people who aren't um, used to it. Um, and thankfully, I've grown up in a generation where um, it's a very positive thing to talk about mental health and to talk about your insecurities um, it's so much so when I'm with my friends, I can feel open that we can have a laugh, and we can have a joke, and but like when when we ha- we're going through some things, like we totally open up, and my mates are always there to to support me and give me advice, which I feel really lucky for. And like people at like my dad's generation will have that as well, but like um, not the, not to the same extent that the, that we do. And and you're teaching it, them. I, I, I suppose so in a way. Yeah. Like it yeah, is. Like, it's- yeah, I feel I've heard a lot of parents that have said that, my, my mine included, that that feel that they that is a two way thing that they have learned stuff from me and my sister, and um, I know my my whole understanding of the world came from my folk, and I'm so grateful of that. And um, but like, You've obviously it's, done a wonderful job. <laughs> mm. There's some there's some good eggs. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's like it's a two way thing that you can learn. Um, you can learn from your kids as well. And like, mm-hmm. I think they're our biggest mirrors, to be honest with you. Like, absolutely. whether we like it or not, we have to be like open to it. The things that trigger us, the things that upset us. And, you know, generally it's oh, okay. Well, they're talking back, but guess what? I, I, I was never able to do that. Yeah. So absolutely. my response is you can't do it either. <laughs> and, but that's not right. They deserve autonomy. They deserve a voice. And, I think that it's your generation that's putting mm-hmm. it out there for us. From your children as well, do you feel that like you like have gained a new perspective yourself? Oh, they were my doorway to healing. Mm. It's seeing what was triggering me, seeing what was upsetting to me, and um, unfortunately, it was too late, like too late from their youth, um, that I finally got got it figured out. But they're both you know, incredible humans as far as I'm concerned. Um, but it's it they they were the ones that, you know, helped me see me. Yeah. And it was what I saw I didn't always like. Like I wasn't always happy with that. So but that wasn't their fault. That was me. And that's what I had to learn how to grow from. Right. That's not your fault at all. Like what we're talking mm. about it's it's inherent. It's came from forces yeah. that we can't control yeah. like we don't know what we don't know and you know like so there's no blame or shame or anything attached to it it's just knowledge it's just knowledge yeah yeah and it can take it take years to like understand that as well it takes experience to like to to unlock that like i i i feel that myself there's things that i don't understand about myself 
now but in 10 years too so I might I might, I might do or might like it, things just hit it's life that that unlocks yeah. that you mm-hmm. kind of do like god I wish I knew that at like 18 19 but like how could you or even if you right. did maybe or understand it like it right takes... what would I do with it yeah exactly yeah. yeah like at least now we have neuroscience and we have you know stuff like this that's actually playing with us in order for us to know what the next step is where we you know before we're kind of running blind and I love the people who are able to step outside of that and you know like I wasn't capable of doing it with my kids is helping them with that emotional growth and understanding as kids they've had to figure it out as adults but it seems like you grew up with it you you know your parents allowed you to have those emotions um, yes Right. So it's that that kind of emotional understanding. I mean, God, Paul, if everybody in this world had some emotional understanding and and self-awareness. We would be great. We would would, feel like you're totally right. The problem, some of the problems that we have would not exist. Why did I say that? I shouldn't have said that. I'm going to work in that. Yeah. Well, gee, that person's living in their own world, too, and not paying attention to mine. So why am I so offended by them cutting me off? It's the same kind of idea. (laughs) Exactly. If people could just connect and be aware of, like, the way they act, the way that others act, it's, um, yeah, but it's like what we're talking about. It goes beyond things that we understand. Or, like, it's, it's because of their upbringing or because of where what they do and like it all has like an effect and Mm -hmm. which is fascinating but then also like you're saying like it does create people who who might cause others harm or or cause themselves as well Mm -hmm. like it's such a a, i don't think any person who is ultimately angry all the time or you know negative a lot of the time is has any love or care for themselves and i find that it's sad because if you did, you wouldn't want to feel that way. That's a you know, that's a demoralizing way to feel. I know. I naively I thought this when I was younger, and I still I think I still hold on to it as well. Like I naively believe that that everybody has good in them. Like I, I do believe that. I do believe that. Yeah, and like I do too. It is due to people's levels of insecurity and, and not like opening up to themselves or understanding that and um and it's not for us to really like push them to 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 reach that understanding. It's for them to discover that themselves, I suppose. And it would be more meaningful if they discover that for themselves, I think, as well. Um but yeah, it's just this whole it's a whole I like to believe that people people are inherently good. Um, yeah. I agree. It, it helps. It helps to maybe like understand the world that we live in that like oh right. it's... Then it, people do horrible, horrible things. Um, and there's reasons for it, whether or not we understand the reason, whether we, you know, can um, connect to the reason, that doesn't matter. It's and, and as surface level and horrible as it sounds, they all started out like this, deserving love, care, and support. And those who didn't get it are the ones who, you know, have a hard time functioning and... You know, so I, I, I find now I have much more compassion for people, especially people who are so filled with hate, because I know hate comes from fear. And exactly. Scared. I think that's a really healthy way of, of looking at it because you you look to understand these people and like you you don't you don't push away because I feel like uh especially in in, in in America, like, uh, well, actually, Britain as well, the whole world, to be honest. Canada, yeah. And every, every, every country that is influenced via the westernized mentality, it seems. We, we, it's, we're so polarised. We're so, like, shouting at the, the other person and not um, on both sides of the spectrum. And you just, mm-hmm. you just to, to, to sit down and talk and understand and as much as you disagree if you can understand then you can possibly influence and it's, it's easier said than done I'm, I'm not a politician but like um, but I, I feel that that's maybe missing like, like when mm-hmm. I watch the minister's questions I feel that it's just a it's just a shouting match and it's just a belittling match and it's not mm-hmm. a, a coming together um, kind of like discussion um, but I, I think like- yeah I like calling, I, I, and it's not, and I don't feel like it's uh insult so much, but it's like an emotional toddlerhood. 
because yeah. when we never grow past and we never learn about our emotions and we get stuck in that space so it's like yeah i don't think i don't think adults have temper tantrums i don't think adults yell at each other i don't think that i think what they do is they revert back to the child that's inside of them <laughs> and then throw it out it's exactly that it sounds so like far-fetched but it's totally it's totally <laughs> you're totally right yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. because i mean adults should be able to have a discussion to escalate and exactly. you know move forward like that's that seems like the the right way to love us you know i hope that i think i feel that we are heading towards that it might not come as soon as we want it to but i feel i don't know i feel like i feel like that is is entering the conversation people are are getting i don't know i feel like we're maybe we're not reaching equilibrium yet but like i don't know no. i i that that we will reach a point where that is the norm and like mm -hmm. it's it's not about um who won or who wins the arguments about creating a better place for 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 everybody um, right creating that dialogue too is is so important and i think having conversations like this is equally important because some people you know like i said you don't know what you don't know until somebody puts it in front of you and when you see other people living from a place of love support kindness and compassion then if it's triggering to you, then that's because something's needed here. And we can and we can learn from that. We can learn from the conversations that people have. And I mean, this went totally off of what I was expecting to talk about, but I mean I'm 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 thrilled with it. <laughs> I know I like like I love a, a segue. I just I, yeah I just I, yeah. So I never get that's why I'm such a good procrastinator because I just go I go down the rabbit hole. <laughs> Okay, bring it back, bring it back, bring it back. Um, yeah, I have ADHD, so I am totally on board with that one. It's, <laughs> <laughs> last minute, this is how I do things. Uh, <laughs> you know, a little bit better. Like a crammer at school, would you like cram everything in? Like to the, or would you? Yeah, you would do that. No, the project was project was given a month ago, the night before. <laughs> knock out an A every always, time. Yeah, always. It, I, just give me time. I've got it. I've got this. I've got this. <laughs> it's, it, but but I, I think that's because I was. I was living, you know, living my life in this fight flight. So anything else didn't feel comfortable. Like if I'm yeah. giving it time, that doesn't feel comfortable. It doesn't feel natural. So now I'm getting a little bit better. Um, I did have the questions and everything that I was going to ask you all all done a couple of days ago. So that's that's new for me. Um, and then then even newer me, not using them. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I can't ever get them. <laughs> we could just spitball this; is totally fine. <laughs> uh, it's, it's supposed to be an interview, but we're just chatting, and that's okay. I'm <laughs> I'm fine with that. But I will go back a little bit here um, to um, your fan group, the Pollinators, which is a hilarious and clever um, uh, name for them. And Kathy uh, McQuinston from Cats and Kills was the one that came up with that, and uh, she is. Um, one of the most wonderfully genuine people that I've ever met in my life. Uh, and she she had a couple of questions that she wanted to ask you about mayflies. Of course, yeah, of course. Uh, yeah. Well, you have already talked about your experience on it, which was really great. And you went to the BAFTAs? I did. I was very fortunate that I could uh, I could go to the BAFTAs. But just just quickly on, on Kathy as well, like I, told, I completely agree with yourself. She, she is just such a empathetic and like wonderful person and when I first both met, e met you, uh, mm -hmm. know, three years ago, like I just felt the love that you both had for the show and support that you gave me and, and Caitlin and the cast. And I feel so privileged that you both were involved in, in creating the, the group for me. And mm -hmm. uh, and you, you both championed me in, in such a, a way that I could never have imagined I would ever have. Um, so I'm, I'm totally grateful and thankful for you both for doing that. It must that. be a little surreal, eh? Oh, very, so very, very yeah. surreal. You never, you never, you never uh, think when you start doing this that you ever would would have something as as wonderful as that. But um, I, I, I am just so grateful that I have yourself and 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 Kathy who 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 runs it. Like to uh, to have you guys in my corner. Like I feel very lucky and grateful. And you both are so respectful as well. And um, yeah, I, I just 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 before I talk about that, I just I really okay. appreciate. Just really, That's really very cool. sweet. Thank you. Not at all, mm. not at all. Um, but yeah, we, yeah, we went to the BAFTAs uh, for Mayflies, which was which was amazing. Again, you'd never think that you um, 
do these things <laughs> when you when you when you begin. Um, so I felt very very lucky and grateful to to be at that. I was there with um, Synchronicity, who are the production team, and uh, the casting director was there as well. And uh, it felt like a total kind of like um, uh, a moment of I suppose closure for the show, and um, because it was just it was just a wonderful experience. And I was there with the the, the, the Mayflies boys as well. Um, which was which was which was great. Um, me and Mitchell, we had never been to something like that before, so we're like, we're going to tag team this. We're going to like, mm-hmm. we're going to get. And like, I see, love that. We'll hold off the drink. See everybody. everybody everybody's drunk. Okay, well now we'll start drinking. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, and it was it was it was wonderful. It was like so. I was so nervous to to go to something like that. Um, but it was just a total celebration of like Scottish Scottish work and um the talent. Oh, we has and we and we and we won as well, which was amazing. And and the guys were great. They had, they got us all up on stage, which was which was mad. And um and yeah, again, it just felt very. And I, like I said, I never been to like an awards thing like that before. And you do feel a bit of nerves about it, but it is just such a supportive. It's, it's fellow actors, it's fellow creatives, it's fellow producers, it's people who have all been at the early stages of their career, and and they understand the the, the madness of it, and the um I suppose the um what's the word serendipity of it like it's just yeah. it's um i felt very supported and i felt very very proud to be scott to be scott to be scotland to be scottish yeah. in that in that night um it was great and it was it was great for the show as well and the work that everybody put into it and the cast the crew and it felt a total a total team effort like which outlander feels like as well um and yeah, I'm just very lucky that both 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 shows that I've been on, like I've felt very ensemble based and felt as really like coming together. I was really, really lucky. Really lucky. Do you feel like do you feel like the energy is shifting within the entertainment industry? In terms of like in a more positive kind of like mm-hmm. way? Or... Yeah. yeah, I so I think I think um like luckily I came into it when there was discussions, these like positive discussions were happening. Um, I, I, I can't really speak for like people's experiences before that time mm-hmm. but um, I feel like going into a job you just do feel supported and you feel like your your um, your issues will be heard um, mm-hmm. and like yeah like I feel very lucky that I am coming into the industry at this time as, as, as crazy and as as difficult as it still can be mm-hmm. Um there is support there that was never there before. For example, like um, uh, intimacy coordinators and Outlander, like that is now just a recent thing. Now we have it on the show. Um, actually, the, the intimacy coordinator for Outlander is my old lecturer, Vanessa. Um, oh, really? A wonderful teacher and beautiful human being. Um, and she now does intimacy coordinating, I think kind of full time now. Um, but she had met Sam when Sam came to RCS. And they got into a discussion as to the works that she's doing. And Sam was like, can we get you in, in on the show? And that was him kind of championing that for her, like putting that onto the show because it, it is such a vulnerable situation. Like, Yeah, their first, their first season was really intense. And I can imagine that both of them are like, oh, Sorry. well, this would have been nice. A lot of trepidation entering those scenes, I can imagine. And, and, and it's just amazing now in the industry that we have someone that can fill that role and, and make it feel comfortable for those involved and, and there's a language there that 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 um feel supported and like um yeah you're not you're not entering those situations completely terrified you're entering it with like a foundation um right yeah so like to answer your question I, I do feel that the industry is swinging in a good way and and even with things like um like diversity we're seeing people from all walks of life finally on screen mm-hmm. uh, like it, it is very exciting to be in the industry at this time like I feel that we're telling fascinating stories and and um that all contributes to like I uh, hoping you know you know making people heard and making <laughs> as cheesy as it sounds making the world a bit more of a you know a better place like it is it's not cheesy at all it's it's reality i mean people people do get drawn into these things like okay outlander for one is you know something that 
I was addicted to before it even came onto the screen. So it's there's there's some sort of bond there that's necessary. And the emotional attachment that you have to it, I think it's important what we consume is not all just true crime and murder and, you know, because that's, you know, we're we're internalizing all of it. To, so to have some things that you actually can see the effort, the love that's put into it. That's why I have a really hard, hard time criticizing um anything when it comes to art that people make uh, because it's them and i don't know them but okay. i can see their art yeah and that is like such a vulnerable thing for people to put out there as well like criticism is good and you do you do become better with with with, with criticism being given to you and um, but i totally you're that's very like um sensitive like the, that, that outlook that you have sherry that like it is somebody's art and it, it can feel like for themselves as well, especially writers, and um, mm -hmm. that is a lot of their own soul and their own experience. Sometimes that they put onto page, and that can feel terrifying. I can't, I can't mm -hmm. imagine what that would feel like. And um, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an actor. I just people say those people's words, but like for actually putting something out there that it can be so personal, like it must feel feel terrifying. And you want that's going to be received well, it's not going to be received well. Like there's so many other factors that are in your head. Mm -hmm. um, but um, yeah, just going just going back to what we talked about previously, like putting these stories out there, you do hope that audience members will leave with a bit more understanding about somebody else's life and somebody else's culture than they might not have had before. So right. I do feel the industry is moving in a more positive direction. We've got some things that are that do need to be fixed and sure. things that need to be addressed, but I think we are we are we are working and there's, there's much more sensitive. Um, in the support of uh, industry that I think is now, now exists, which is which is really positive. Like right, and I think that's looking at the individual, like whatever level they're at, whether they're a grip, whether they're an actor, whether they're the director, is looking at them as an individual, not as an industry. Right, and I think that helps you know form that equality and form that sense of self. I suppose um, when it comes to when it comes to the art. Um, Exactly, exactly. It's a, it's a massive team that makes these things and every individual person that you're saying is so vital for, for that thing to, 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 to be successful. Mm -hmm. So like every voice is so important and I feel that that is apparent now and like, yeah, I feel very lucky that I've entered the industry at this point and maybe, God, even like maybe 10 years ago or maybe 20 right. years ago. Very, very, very different landscape. Mm -hmm. But it's good. It's showing, I feel like, I feel like the creative industry is very good at adapting. It's very good at um, being progressive and moving with the times. Mm -hmm. um, and it is like we do. It, 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 so unfortunately, sometimes it does take a kind of tragic event sometimes to happen. I suppose that is the case with history in itself as well. Like change sometimes comes out of, of like mm -hmm. difficult situations. But like yeah. I would say, you know, props to the creative industry that we do adapt and we do, we do. We do adapt. We do change with yeah. with that 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 um that go on. So like yeah, right. it's a very positive thing. Mm -hmm. One of the one of the uh, quotes from Mayflies that I thought that's 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 the Paul that that I'm I know and I'm exposed to. It's a man made of sunshine. <laughs> it's, yes. it's it's that exuberance that you have and that you know. Um, joy of life i guess that you put out there that is uh people grab onto it and it helps oh thank you very much Cher. yeah yeah i mm. think I, that's very kind of you to say um i, su I suppose that i do i just strive to treat others the way i would want to be treated and um you know I was, that was instilled to me by my folks and um and the people that i grew up with and like i i, I think it's just very important it's it's so much uh, it's so much easier to be nice to someone than like to be to be to be cruel to someone. Oh, like, yeah. But it's like it's so easy, and um, I think I think everybody does know that as well. But some people choose to right. on the mm -hmm. other side. But um, you, and 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 you get so much out of it yourself as well. But like the being by being kind to 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 each other, and um, it's 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 just so easy and it, it, yeah like like we were talking before the naivety that there's good in people like i do i do believe that and i do believe that when people access that that we do we do create a much more better place to be yeah. <laughs>
Well, with that in mind, if your if if your life was a genre, what uh -huh. do you think it would be? That's a good question. Um, genre. I would like to say it was a thriller, but it's definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> I think thrillers need to come in bits. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, there's much more to. Um, I I would probably say. I like to say it's a rom com because I am probably a bit of a easy romantic, but like um, it's my Achilles heel. But like um, mm -hmm. yeah, I would say like a like a or like a buddy movie or like one of those movies from the like the noughties where they go like adventures and things like that. Like right, if, yeah, as a genre, I am that. <laughs> right? There like you to, go. <laughs> I think you are. I think I think what you put out there is you know is uh uh delightful <laughs> so that would exactly be um there there are fan conventions and you have gone to yeah. right um it, what do you think of those like are they... amazing like um just just i like I, i've never i've never experienced something like that an event like that even as a as, as a fan of like i've never i've never been to a comic con before um but and, and what was really great about the ones that I've been to is because they are Outlander specific conventions. Right. It's just people that love the show and have such an understanding and appreciation and knowledge of the show as well that it just feels it's it's those experiences that are that us as cast members are really lucky to do because you do the show and you, you, you it's not it's not like theatre where you, you you perform and you get an immediate reaction from the audience and you go right. out to bar afterwards you get to talk to people what they thought about the play and whereas with, with, with television and film you film it and then a year in the future is that it then comes out and you get a bit of like like kind of like immediate reaction from that with the conventions it was just a, a real privilege to like meet and talk to people and 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 and, and see how much they've been touched by the story and uh how much they relate to the to the twins and 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 just the show as a spectacle as well and um it's just it was just very all, all those conventions that I've been to have been really moving because it, it's just people are just so passionate about it and um it's, it reminds me of, of myself about things that I'm passionate about as well and especially when I was a, when I was a teenager as well like I would love and die for like certain bands and certain oh, right. people and it's um yeah it's just it's, it was really moving to see and I'm, I'm just very I just felt so lucky that I could attend those and, and meet meet people that because a lot of our fans are, are based across the sea as well so it was right. just nice to meet them and meet people like Kathy as well and um yeah it's, and I think those events are just really important as well because like what was also really moving as well was seeing people who had made friends at these conventions and it was from other parts of the globe from people from Spain were friends with people from America and people from Canada and like and then they got to to to, to meet at this event at something that something that they both love um that, that, that that's amazing that's so unique and so like uh, lovely I, I wonder if like that's been your experience as well that you've met people through the show <laughs> and the, yeah Oh, so many. Um, I started uh, the Bootlanders, which is what I do the Lovelander project through. And it's um, a great community. And it's so cool to be able just to get together with people. And like we don't talk about Outlander the whole time. But the thing is, is that it's the thing that connected us. Yes, it's, just, it's the thing right? that brought you here. But like, yeah, yeah, so I have these people in my life that I never would have ever experienced before and learned so much from them. And, you know, they've been with me throughout, you know, the years and the transformations and the, and, and it's, it's a beautiful because it's all, you know, it's, it all comes down to a book and a show. Absolutely. And, Diana, and are writing that down at these relationships. Mm -hmm. that's, that's amazing. Yeah, and I've been lucky enough to meet her a few times and have lunch with her, and and it's it's just it's such a strange um, connection I feel with people who show how much they love something and bond over it. It's it's a I think it's a pleasure. People call you know shows like this a guilty pleasure, and I don't think there's anything to feel guilty about if you're living in your joy, and if it's something that brings you happiness. How I am you? exact opinion as well, Sherry. Like I, I, I learned that maybe like when I was a teenager. I think Dave Grohl, the guy who played in Nirvana and sings in Foo Fighters, he said that like he was asked, like, "What should get your pleasure?" And he's like, "I've got no get your pleasure." And he said exactly what you just said. Like if you love it, you fucking love it. Like there's no That's like, right. like don't mm -hmm. don't 
that if you listen to this person, don't be like anybody who who looks down on you. Like, forget them. Don't you don't have to bother with them. Like, it's mm. like there's so much of like wasted life if you're pretending that you don't like something you actually do. If you just open your heart and be like, I fucking love it, then you're going exactly. You're gonna, and you're going to meet people like you said to also share that love as well, which is like mm-hmm. so important. I love my sister. We do a podcast together with the with the episodes, and and it's uh, we we still have to do season six and season seven yet. But we've done done the other five. And she <laughs> is crazy, and I'm the one that introduced her to it. So I have to take uh, you know I have to take the punches from the family. She's watching that jam. Um, <laughs> she loves it. Oh, brilliant, brilliant. Uh, but I I kept. Oh, this has been over an hour now, Paul. No, not at all. This is that. I've got so much for you. I've got all the time for you. You know that. Absolutely. Oh, you're the sweetest. And can I add um, for the pleasures, because they're not guilty, for the for the pleasures, what are yours outside of acting? What am I, what am I like, kind of interests? Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I think I might have talked about it before, but I music was my yeah. kind of way into like performance i i god when i was 30 14 i was in a punk band um and we were awful but you were I, not awful i saw the tape you found it oh no i saw, I saw oh, it yeah. so, i'm gonna link it so everybody could watch it we were we were we were okay but um i had i got so much so much of like um that kind of performance bug from from doing that and um I, that kind of segued into kind of discovering acting and like finding a love for that so music is a massive massive part of my identity i think and mm-hmm. and like you say like the guilty pleasures i still listen to the same things i listened to when i was a teenager and still follow those bands and now follow new bands who still have that sound and still go to gigs and um like that that music is a big part of a big part of who i am and um I'm now like it was mad like last year wasn't I was listening to a lot of music but I was never like playing it a lot Mm -hmm. so this this year has been like a kind of like um people might believe in New Year's resolutions and others might not but like this one my one has been like to get back into like kind of writing music and um say anything I might not perform it live but it's just for my own my own benefit so um which is just just as important um yeah absolutely music and uh all of these when I do I now go back into reading again and reading um this side of paradise by Scott's F. Scott Fitzgerald and um which is just which is just absolutely incredible. Like I read Gatsby for the first time like quite recently, which is mad. We never studied it in school. A lot of people like yeah. do it in school, but we we never mm-hmm. we my class never did and um I just recently read it but like this is and sick this is like incredible it's 100 years ago but there's still like so much that i can connect to and relate to and um questions about life and um so i i, I kind of went on that kind of fitzgerald kind of kind of kind of um but yeah those are those are kind of some key things that like kind of like i feel passionate about and um but i'm open to like discovering new things as well i think it's so important that you don't stick to certain things that make you you but like find some and try some things out that you might not like engage with you may not be good at yeah learning new things is the way we grow right like i i i recently i like will now go with my mates to go play pool and like i am awful at playing pool but i love playing it and like i know i will never become good at it but i love i love playing it and like there's like for other people like you might find that as well like oh my god i'm so bad at this but i love doing it like it's Mm -hmm. It's so important. Yeah, that's like, me and singing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I yeah, don't. My husband's like, did you, do you like us? Yeah. <laughs> Why are you ruining it? So please stop. That's the thing. It's, it's that love of something. And I'm sure your friends love going to play pool with you since you are so good at it. It makes them feel better. I mean, I could rash me out and be like, oh, let's play again. Jesus, what's wrong with this guy? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely love it. Um, boost them boost them and that's the way to do it i mean if you if you could um if you weren't I don't know, mm-hmm. what would you see yourself being drawn to music obviously but, yes i know i know i know yeah. probably be it's still probably the dream is to be like a rock star touring <laughs> touring the world but i suppose it's everybody's dream but um music can I always I, lo- I loved um I loved history at school 
Um, I don't know about yourself. Did you did you a, a big fan when you were? Well, see, in school, like we didn't learn any Canadian history. We hey, learned you... most. It was, the... it was mad. We 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 and uh, when we were in first year at high school, uh, which I was twelve, we learned a bit about the wars of independence, about like William Wallace and Robert the Bruce. But then we moved on to like learn about Germany and a lot about Germany. <laughs> I don't get why we learned about that, but then also like it was just like not a lot of our own history. We learned a bit about the home front, but that was Britain as a whole. Didn't learn anything about like the Jacobites or or any any of that period. So when I started doing Outlander, I was like, this is a part of history that's so rich and so interesting that I, I hope maybe now the curriculum's changed a bit. But like, um, yeah, I was I was totally fascinated with history. So maybe something in that, like a mm. teacher or, or researcher of some kind. Um, I think I don't it's know really. I think it's really cool to think about it as, you know, you're in your upbringing when you were doing the music and, you know, like obviously with your parents' support. And then when you decide I want to be an actor, what was the reception? Like, was it? I like, think it was moment and totally understandable. Of like, oh, <laughs> Then, but then, like as soon as as soon as that was was over, my mum was like looking up like uh, groups that I could go to, and and my dad was the same as well. They were are very supportive, and I think that's a big, it's a big thing for artists. Is and a difficult thing is 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 that you. It's very. I feel very lucky that I have like a supportive base, and I always had a supportive mm -hmm. base. Yeah. Um, that that pushed me to like to 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 go for this, and it, I have a lot of friends that that wanted to do this as well, and but had parents that maybe um, and understandably that like you want your kid to be secure and and financially secure as well, and 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 art doesn't really afford that sometimes, um, so they they had to choose another path, and um, but I I'm very lucky that I I had parents that and family that that supported me and friends as well I have. Friend, my, my mates from school always came to my shows, and um, even That's though some, <laughs> some of them were very long, um, <laughs> three hours was one was one play. Oh um, wow! Um, they came and they supported me. So like I again, like we're talking about, like luck is such a massive thing, and not just trying to to make a career in this industry, but but luck in terms of having people around you that support you as well is a massive mm -hmm. thing. For sure. I mean, I can I can imagine what what it would feel like for and it's expectation, right? It's like that seems like to be the the doom scroll is the expectation everybody has for you to have this kind of job and work in this kind of industry. And if you're doing this, then it's this. You know, it's it goes back to what we were talking about before, having the two extremes. You know, yeah. there's an awful lot in the middle of that spectrum. And to have the love and support of your family is incredibly important. Do you have any projects that are up and coming? Um, that you can talk about nothing I can talk about. Um, oh, okay. But um, I suppose we are uh, well. Outlander is coming back, which is good. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, I think it's a great time to be an Outlander fan at the moment because you've got you've got you've got the final season coming up, and then you've also got the prequel that's coming up as well. Which which uh, which um, Tony's in. Tony's in, yes. Yeah, played. yeah. So there's your Mayfi's connection to Outlander again. Yeah, I, I know. It's, I was talking to the producer like a couple of weeks ago, and he was saying like, oh, "We got, we got Tony Curran." I was like, "You got Tony? Oh, <laughs> mad that it's mad that Tony's not actually been an Outlander because um, he he suits that world so well." But they finally they found a found, they found a place for him, and um, he, he'll be great in that role as well. Um, it's such a great role. Um, is that is that role discussed at all? Is James grandfather? Lord love it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes, yes, it's okay. So there's an there's like an uh, an image that people might that might that yeah. Are, and he you know. and he's spot on. Angry Scott, there you go. He's brilliant. <laughs> like I mean, he was different in Mayflies to a degree, but you know that that fire that he has. He, he's he's got an amazing amount of passion. We we share mm -hmm. we share passion for the football team that we uh, that we love with Celtics. I see that passion <laughs> coming a lot, but he, he's. <laughs> wonderful wonderful actor and a wonderful like a really i'm um, really humble and and talking about support like with mayflies him martin ashley tracy the kind of the the cast that were playing the adults were right. so supportive to us and like so lifting us up as well and um giving us advice and 
uh, in a way that was like that, that I that I uh, you know that I encountered when I was an outlander with Sam and Katrina as well and like these people just want other people to do well and it's like you feel so privileged that you enter projects like that and so it's um it's wonderful that people like that are, are still working on on the show even though it's yeah. a different time it's a it seems it seems like the people that you've worked with have more of a um attitude of contribution rather than criticism absolutely absolutely yeah. and it's so that's so important i think it's so important in any field but like especially art like it's so it can be so easy to speak from a position of privilege and to to kind of to bat away um mm -hmm. things and, and to become self-indulgent uh, in this industry but like you the people that i've met and the, and the people that i i i look up to are people that like you say they contribute and they and they're selfless and they focus on the project at hand and anything else just goes out the door um mm -hmm. i think it's a big factor in, in people doing well in this industry as as people like that they're open books and want to do the best work possible and work together as well as an ensemble it's so it's so important so important mm -hmm. Yeah, you've had some, you've had some, like, and I don't think it's big shoes following. I don't think it's that. I think it's like working with and being partners with. That's what it seems much more so, even though, okay, yep, they've been there longer or they've, you know, ground into their, into their roles more. It seems like they just kind of scoop everybody up and really, you know, make it, make it collaborative, which is, I think, probably a big secret to why it's so successful. I think you're completely right, Sherry. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's like from day one, like I remember being so nervous because it was my first day, it was my first professional job, it was my first screen job. I'd done a couple of short films before, but nothing to this extent. And coming on my first day, I was so nervous. And I knew I had Caitlin, who I met the chemistry, uh, our chemistry reading, um, and at the read through as well. Uh, but I'm still, still nervous. But then mm -hmm. someone like Sam, who I had in my first scene, um, just so supportive and so down to earth and grounded and 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 took so much time to talk to me and um and make me feel welcome as well. Like he didn't have to do that, but he did do that because it's the kind of person that he is and the kind of artist that he is. And it's so important. And I think you're totally right. I think that's why the show is as successful as it is because it employs and it surrounds itself with people that want to contribute. Like that's such a good word that you said. That is yes. the contribution that's so. It's so vital and what you bring to the table and and then um, mm -hmm. yeah it's a team effort absolute team effort beautiful i love it and I'm, I'll, I'll i'll not take up any much more of your time but i do want to maybe close out with like uh this or that kind Go of questions okay uh cool. vintage vinyl or the latest streaming uh I like to think I would be vintage vinyl, but I think I am streaming. <laughs> Spotify makes it too easy. Too it, just, easy. it does. It does. Cool. No. <laughs> uh, quiet self-reflection or crowded party? Quiet self-reflection, I think. Yeah, I'm there too. Um, iconic movie role or groundbreaking TV series? Um, groundbreaking TV series. The punk in me would say so. Anyway. <laughs> See, you are a real punk. See, real... see. Yeah, so... <laughs> uh, coffee or tea? Tea. I really wanted to get into coffee. I've like my gateway has been a mocha, which isn't really a coffee. It's just a hot chocolate with a dash of espresso in it. But like, <laughs> I'm making my caffeine, way there. Caffeine has too much cortisol. And it makes it makes you crazy anyway. So tea's tea for you. <laughs> uh, <Thank> you. <laughs> early bird, night owl. Night owl. I used to be an early bird when I was like young, but now I am. Um, I like I like my lines in. <laughs> mm -hmm. They're nice, aren't they? They're just look at a clock. Oh, sweet. Like, Classic yeah. literature or sci-fi? Sci-fi. Love mm -hmm. sci-fi. I think that's my favorite genre. I think it would, would be sci-fi because it's so you, limited. You, you like Marvel, right? I do. I do love Marvel. I like Marvel a lot. Like I think. What that would is, be what would be Paul Gorman's superhero like? What would that look like? In terms of like what I would like, what would my powers be? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that. I don't know. Um, like we were talking about, like uh, what's the word? Mediation, bringing, <laughs> bringing people. There you go. Great oh, gatherer. <laughs> he can't oh, climb and lift cars, but he can talk people out of things. <laughs> 
de-escalator. <laughs> you wouldn't even make the Avengers. You'd be like them. You'd be like, oh, no. <laughs> well, they need them too. Oh. That's true. They guitar? Do or going guitar or vocals? Guitar. Guitar for sure. Yeah, yeah. Because I can sing. Or like... I can. I, I, I like singing groups, but I, I like... I yeah, I'm more towards a guitar. I think it's that yeah. such you and watching the watching the clip on YouTube of uh of your your punk band. Um Empire, what was it called again? Imperial City. Well done. Well done. Yeah, that's what that's what we were called. It's not even on my paper, Paul. <laughs> it was in there. It was in there. I oh. can't I don't believe you found it. We got that name. We thought it was such a cool name at the time. We came, we got that name from it's a game called Oblivion, which is like in the kind of Skyrim world, like it's an Elder Scrolls game they're called. And the main yeah. city, is Imperial City, it's not even the coolest city in the game, but we thought Imperial City was a was a good thing. Not knowing what imperialism was before then, otherwise I don't think we'd have chosen that name. <laughs> <laughs> well, you like watching the video. It's like it is you, you exude joy. You remember? A lot of noise. <laughs> Vintage fashion or the latest trends? Um, again, I would like to say I'm vintage fashion, but I think I'm. I feel like I'm either. Maybe I, I, I don't know. I kind of feel like I. I need someone to like help me with my fashion. Because <laughs> I wear, I just wear. I've worn like the same fashions as I was like 16, 17, like band t-shirts and, and uh, jumpers. I've gotten into jumpers in the past few years because mm-hmm. I realized like, home place, Scotland, so I probably should wear a jumper. Uh, <laughs> somewhere in the middle. I'm, I, yeah. I am. So I suppose it's vintage then maybe if it's like band mm. t Don't get rid of them. I, I, my husband's still mad at me for tossing out his band shirts from the, from the eighties. So yeah, what? never throw them away. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I was like, it's time to grow up and stop wearing <laughs> these things. And now I'm just, I feel so bad about it. I do. Oh, it's horrible. Wear my Green Day t-shirt, I think. And I know mm. she probably won't suit it, but like, screw it. I'm going to, I'm going to wear them. <laughs> Brings joy. Do it. Uh, exactly. Exactly. A handwritten letter or instant messaging? I am. I am instant messaging and I send paragraphs, man. Like I'm, I'm that kind of guy. Um, I need to stop doing that. I need to be more succinct in my messaging. <laughs> so, I like to think I'm a handwritten letter guy. The, mm-hmm. the romantic uh, side of me likes to think that anyhow. I, I'm one of those texters too. Somebody will send me this much and I'll send this much. They'll send this much. I'll send this much. <laughs> <laughs> well, question it's embarrassing. That- writing share because i know you're writing books do you do you feel like do you type now or do you do you sometimes feel that you do i have yeah but i wrote it all on like a scrapbook <laughs> and now i and i'm like it would have been a lot easier if i typed it out because now i wouldn't have to transcript it all but there's something about writing something with that it just it just feels more creative in a way like it can be quite intimidating just having the screen and just the, the kind of glare of mm-hmm. that something quite nice about using like a bit of paper and things like that that's amazing so that's, that's crazy that's amazing and you, you with your writing music do you do that by hand i i do i do i've not done a, a lot of it recently but like writing i just find it so much easier mm-hmm. when you're just a pen and a paper um mm-hmm. more creative and then i'm like yourself and then i like oh i should have just wrote this because i'm now just going to try it up on the laptop and I, somehow i think it just wouldn't happen like and that's i think i just came to that realization that if i would sit down to write i wouldn't be able to do it i wouldn't have this i wouldn't be connected in the same way and that kind of you know the interruption of the screen exactly like it feels more fluid in a way i don't yeah. know I- Rain to hand. There we go. It works. I love it. Um, home cooked meal or gourmet restaurant? Home cooked meal. Absolutely. It just it's always tastes gourmet, isn't it? It just. Oh God, I'm not the best cook in the world. But like when I've when people have made me food, like my flatmates are very good at cooking. Um, they, when they make they, they they're vegetarians as well, and um, <laughs> they're gonna laugh. I'm telling the story when they when I first moved in with them. Uh, they made me like this beautiful like curry um, and I remember having it and genuinely being like I've never had flavours like this in my life this is amazing and it's just like <laughs> and there's like the love and care as well that you make you make into it as well I think that does that makes it makes it a bit tastier I think 
You said you're not a very good cook. What is something that you do cook regularly? I, I do love chicken. It's, um, it's, it's my, my <laughs> I need to get better at like not eating too much meat. Um, and I will, I'm, I'm progressing to maybe like one day a week and then I'll up and up and up. Because mm -hmm. there's so many alternatives now that you can have. Um, yeah, just, for sure. I do make a lot. I'll make a lot of chicken. I love pasta. Love pasta. Um, mm. just, I have like a like a bolognese kind of thing, like mm -hmm. it's well, like oh my god, it's great, it's so good. Good, see, then you can cook. That's true. That's true. There's a, a foundation, uh -huh. <laughs> art museum, or a science exhibit. Uh, even though I just said I love sci-fi, I would say art art museum for sure. Like, yeah, love them, love them. Like, yeah, we have a great one in. Um, in Glasgow, we've got the Goma, which is the modern art museum, and we've also got mm -hmm. the Kelp Grove, uh, which is my favorite museum. Um, and the art in there is just amazing; like it's great. My my youngest is heading to Scotland in May, and uh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, like I said, it's going before me. It's so rude. Like I've had this on my bucket list for twenty five years, and you know they get the opportunity, and they're like, "I'm gone, Mom. See ya." Yeah. <laughs> Are they going for vacation? Are they going for like work? Are they going? Yeah, for they're going for vacation. Yeah, they're taking a couple of weeks, and yeah, they have a friend who um, they went to university with um, nice. here that moved to uh, Edinburgh. Oh, lovely! Um, oh, great! Yeah, so uh, yeah, they're going there, but they're he wants to travel, you know, oh, as much lovely. as he can and take day trips and stuff like that. And yeah, so it'll be it'll be really good. I'm I'm, I'm excited for him. I give him a hard time. But I'm really excited for it. Where do you think that would be the best place to go? Hey, well, I was just a young man. Saying like Edinburgh's a great place to start, I think. Because mm -hmm. you've got history in that city, but then you've also got like really exciting, groundbreaking um theatre and music and like so much culture. Mm -hmm. Um but then the total Glaswegian that I am, I will say Glasgow is better. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> not you have to, and like it's a that's that's a natural thing. I mean that, but I do feel like uh, there's so much going on in Glasgow as well that you should, as a young person as well, such a great nightlife in Glasgow and um, as, a, as, a, as a Canadian as well, like he will be like loved by everyone <laughs> that meets him. That's um, awesome. But, like I think Glasgow, but then you should definitely, I imagine he will be going up north. Like mm -hmm. the place that I used to always go to is, as, as, a, as a kid and as a family, we used to always go to Oban, which is like, okay. See, as the gateway to the to the Highlands. I mean, I made that up, um, but like, hey, that sounds good. They might bar they might borrow it. You could borrow that if, if that has not been <laughs> not been said before. But there's loads of ferries you can get that can take you to different parts of the Highlands, and and Open itself is such a beautiful kind of seaside town that um, I am biased because we used to go there like every year. Um, right. But then you've got Mull, which has got Tobermory, um, which was the the kind of basis for Ballamory, which is this kids show that we used to watch when we were younger. Um, so it's like that. That is beautiful. But then Inverness is great as well. And I've never been to Aberdeen, which is mad. Um, but that I've heard that's beautiful as well. And Glencoe, which is mad that I've never been there. Uh, Daniel, that plays my double in the show, he's from Glencoe. <laughs> we say <laughs> Glencoe. I've never been to Glencoe. <laughs> uh, like that. Th if he's going for like landscape, like that is perfect. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And a lot of in those valleys as well. Like absolutely. I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep all of those in check marks too, because we're hoping 2025. We've got our fingers crossed that that's when we're gonna finally make it. Brilliant, Sherry. You feel like I wonder if it will feel like coming home to you in a way because you. You, you know, know, I've felt like I've missing out for so long, and every time I see pictures, I I am addicted to escape to the country. <laughs> <laughs> I'm constantly telling my husband like we need. To move there, uh, <laughs> just uh, uh, it's been such an absolute pleasure, Paul. Oh, Sherry, it's been wonderful. It's always, it's just always so lovely to speak to you, and uh, thank you so much for for doing this. Like we've talked about it for so long, I'm so glad that we we yeah, finally got a, to do it. And... It's been a, it's been a, it's been a few years, hey. It has indeed. It has been a few mm -hmm. years. It's just you're just so easy to talk to, and it's just like it feels like a conversation as well. Like it's just, um, yeah. I'm talking about luck. I'm very lucky that I got to talk to you. Well, I appreciate your time. I appreciate your kindness. And since you're at your mom's house, tell your mom I appreciate her because she did an absolutely fabulous job on guiding you into the human that you've become today. 
Yeah, I appreciate it. I will do. I will do. <laughs> okay. So that's my man of sunshine. So we're going to, I guess, we'll finish up and say goodbye. And I hope you have an absolutely brilliant week. Have a, have a lovely week and have a lovely year, Sherry. And give my love to your lovely family as well. I will. Thank you so much, Paul. Take care. You soon, Sherry. See you soon. All the best. Bye.